I love when you tell me it's not about being superhuman, it's about being super human. And, and that is, I think, a nice way to put it, the journey we're on, right? So great to be here with uh, Jennifer Garvey Berger. Jennifer, you're one of the real world thought leaders on adult development theory and coaching, a thought leader on complexity, and probably your toughest task, you're also my coach. I'd love to hear about how you got into the world uh, of, of coaching. Yeah, it's funny, I started as a researcher. So I started trying to understand how people thought about the world and how they were growing over time. And as I asked those questions, people would come back to me and say, I have been thinking about the world so much differently since that conversation we had. It helped me so much. But it turned out, actually asking people really good questions changes them. If people have a map of their own potential, it changes the way they see themselves and it changes their kind of relationship to who I am now if I have a sense of who I could become. One of the things that's been so striking to see our leaders at Novartis, as they go on the journey, how many of them really find it an awakening to actually see that there's the possibility of, of growth. Psychologists have studied that humans tend to believe that while they've changed a lot in the past, they're not going to change that much in the future. We recognize it super easily in little kids. We see little kids grow and it's not just that they get taller, it's that the way they see the world fundamentally changes. And it turns out adults are that way too. But because we're not growing taller, people kind of don't notice. And so they're not actually in a growth conversation with themselves. And I think lots of leaders are like that. Like, I've worked really hard to get here. What do you mean there's more? What do you mean it's never done? I feel like one of the first things we, we worked on together is for me to realize I'm a work in progress. And it's fascinating how every experience, if you take that mindset, teaches you something more uh, about, about yourself. I mean, how do you how do you coach people to become more open to that kind of experience of learning about themselves? It is this question about curious, right? You're you're trying to get people here at Novartis curious by offering them lots of things to learn about out there. I try to get people curious by helping them learn lots of things about themselves in here. Once they turn the light on inside, they're like, whoa, this is super interesting. There's so much to learn here. You know, you've written a lot about some just basic things people can do. Are there any you know, simple tips for, uh, for people to grow on this journey? Yeah, so once you recognize there's something going on, then you have something to watch. And as you watch, you can notice what your, your current habits are and wonder what would happen if you shifted them a little bit. So we talk about asking different questions. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Where did that should come from? That sense of I should do this. Whose perspective am I not taking here? Yeah, you know, I think one of the, the striking things for me in, in the journey of being a CEO is all the different worlds you have to operate in. And I think that the tricky thing is how to maintain um, your sense of self in, in all of these places where you have so many different people. Um, and realizing also as you go through all those experiences how you observe yourself in, in that and, and actually then asking yourself the question, how did I show up there? Why did I show up that way? I think the thing that you're working on is a thing that leaders struggle with always, which is how, how do I deal with my own fallibility? And to be a senior leader, people have been good at so many things. That's what got them promoted. So how are you with not just the things you do incredibly well, but also those things that you're growing into. I love when you tell me it's not about being superhuman, it's about being super human. And, and that is, I think, a nice way to put it, the journey we're on, right? Yeah, and that idea that leaders need to transform themselves and grow themselves in order to transform the businesses that they're leading is so profound and it's so important. And the most extraordinary thing here is as you grow, you make so much space for everybody else. You know, so I, I love being coached. Uh, does everybody need a coach? Or do you find that all leaders are, are open to coaching? If we're gonna grow, we need contexts that help us grow. You're trying to change this whole organization into a context that helps people grow. In that way, the organization can kind of become a coach. For a leader who recognizes, I would like to be a little different. 
for whatever reason, I think it's great to have a coach, whether you're transitioning into a role, whether you're dealing with feedback, those are really good contexts for coaching because each of them, it's like a little rub that means today, today is not what I want it to be like. And therefore it's worth it for me to change. Changing is hard. Yeah. And then what about the fact that leaders need to learn how to coach their people? We're working on that as well with my, my leadership team. But one striking thing to me, myself included, is uh, leaders don't learn how to coach and often are very bad coaches. Yeah, leaders learn how to fix. And so there's this big difference between listening to fix and listening to learn, listening to create new possibilities together. And it is not a natural thing. Coaches need to be taught how to do that. Of course, leaders would need to be taught how to do that. Nobody wakes up one morning and can do this thing about actually asking questions and listening deeply in a way that I don't know where it's gonna go and you don't know where it's gonna go. We're gonna be in the ambiguity and the uncertainty together and together we're gonna make new things. It's like we tell our, our people in the end, if we want to reimagine medicine, we have to reimagine Novartis. But if we want to reimagine Novartis, we have to reimagine ourselves, starting, starting with me. And it's scary, but if you really do want to change people's lives and you really do want to transform healthcare, that's a pretty good reward. Absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Foss.